Okay. <clears throat> we are back. I'm definitely back, and I think if we leave this guy in here, we need to clip him. Or we don't leave them in. And we. Hi, we're back. <laughs> we're working on our rooster ornament, I should say that. Hi, guys, it's Monday. I sort of started on time, or early. I didn't start as early as I wanted to. I was exhausted. Um, I also jacked my knee up a bit, so... Can I grab this? I can. Okay. So, yeah, I also jacked my knee up a bit. Uh, not last night. Saturday night, Sunday morning in the stupidest way possible getting out of bed or getting up off the bed really and then it hurt for a few minutes and then like after 10-15 minutes you know I didn't wasn't even thinking about it anymore I'm like alright I'm fine got up walked around was fine went to sit back down on the bed and apparently the way I didn't even realize I sit like this on the bed until I hurt my knee. <laughs> because then my knee was like, hey fucker, don't do that. We don't like that. And I was like, oh, I sit that way on the bed? Like I get into bed that way? Apparently I do. So here's the thing. Do we want to do this in roving first and then cover it in black? That might be the better option because didn't we have more of a chunk of this cut off we did okay um don't have any updates for you on the husband's gift right now well, I didn't get to work on it last night so Things were crazy. By the time I got doing, got done doing house stuff, and um, and all of the other things, um, two of the write-ups that I had the information for, and dishes, and I had dinner. It was about midnight, and I decided that if I didn't make my cookies right then and there, I wouldn't be getting them this week, so this is going to be a busy week. And I was working on show notes for the show, updating them with all of the things and stuff. Oh, oh, I need to go do the thing. I forgot to do the thing. How on earth did I forget to do the thing? I want to do it on... I don't know if I can do it on Twitter. do it on YouTube. I'm going to put a poll up on the Law Challenges community tab later tonight, if I remember. 
for this week's show. people really pay attention to that or check in over there, but Alright, so we're putting the little we're working on putting the little butt on for the tail feathers to kind of come out of so that's what this is I probably should have used a lighter color of the roving so you guys can see it a little bit better but it's probably gonna take a, a couple attempts here you can kind of see them that little spot there I know this is gonna be a difficult one to see at first it just looks like I'm stabbing into nothingness, but I swear I've got like all of the lights on that I possibly can. But it's hard because our styrofoam ball is pretty, pretty squishy. So. Let's see, let's open up our roving here a bit. Sometimes the inside's a little bit lighter. So I hope everybody's weekend went well. And that everybody had a chance to just kind of exist, because sometimes that's that's just what you need. You don't have to worry about things getting done. I mean, some of us do, because that's the only chance we have to get stuff done, but... Y'all know what I mean, right? I've been kind of in a crazy scramble realizing things that need to get done. And trying to figure out when the fuck we're gonna do them. That's the bigger challenge right now. So I'd started, I don't remember if I finished the thought yesterday, I really don't. So I'm trying to get as much of the Christmas gifts done as possible, because these take me a little bit of time to do. I am not quick at them by any stretch of the imagination. I might have to hang it from here, just to help with the balance. Um, Because I have a lot of stuff. I forgot about the husband's second gift that I was going to try to make him. Because he keeps making me feel bad. Because he's out with my mom, right? I don't drive. So he's fine with doing quick trips with her. I mean, he's not fine. They're still, they're still extremely difficult. But he'll do it as a way of trying to um, push himself to attempt things. And um, he and they try to go at times of the day where the stores aren't too 
too much for him to handle. And uh, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But like, she's been trying to do Christmas shopping and he's out with her and he keeps seeing stuff and he keeps throwing it in the cart and then he comes home he's like, oh, I picked out some things for you for Christmas and I'm, he's like, I threw them in your mom's cart. I'm like, stop it, I don't have any, hardly anything to give you. I was like, you're making me feel so bad. And he's like, well, it's not like I bought them. She did. And I'm like, it's not the point. You're the one that picked them out. I wouldn't have gotten them if you hadn't. I'm like, stop it. It's like, I don't need all this stuff. We could, like, use that money for, you know, bills or food or the taxes for next year. Like, stop. Which we already have our tax jar going for next year. trying to get as much of this done as I can so I'm not like in a mad rush so we can just kind of chill towards the the closer we get to Christmas hopefully that's probably not what's going to end up happening I'm sure something is going to happen and I'm going to end up being mad crazy busy because you know that's how things seem to go. This doesn't really look centered on the butt. Not really. I guess you can kind of see that off of the, the black shape there. I kind of feel like we need to wrap this guy. On this side. Might work. It might not. We will see. Oh, and our friend Tyler is working on Wednesday night. So we will try to do our Thursday stream on Wednesday this week so we'll try to hit up Coral Island on Wednesday because there will be no Thursday stream this week I will try to remember to change the schedule when we get done here no guarantees I'm gonna remember to do that though but we will try Still using this crazy ass bent needle. I'm gonna use it till the bitter end, damn it. I actually don't think the needles are probably the needles are probably not that much to replace. I haven't looked, but I still have a bunch of them, which is why I haven't looked. I still have snowflakes to do. Did I show you guys the snowflakes? I think I did. So we've got a whole bunch of of these guys they're in different um, shapes they are so delicate I think they were like laser cut or something um, that I need to douse in the dreaded G word that I can't stand but it's Christmas and it's not Christmas if things aren't sparkly kind of conundrum there's already glitter all over the one rug And it will probably be there until February. Unfortunately. It'll either get so ground down into the rug that I'll still be seeing it as people walk over it months from now. I mean, I'll try to vacuum some of it up, but I just shampooed that rug 
where our Christmas tree is, like just shampooed because it's high traffic. The pets like to have their hairballs and all sorts of, I'm going to get sick here incidents right in there. And I'm like, must you? And they always wait until right after I uh, shampoo that thing. And uh, it's a pain because it takes like a full, even with, even with me standing on a puppy, oh, several puppy pads and, uh, and walking over the rug and like just trying to absorb any extra water that the shampoo works. Our shampoo is not the greatest, but you know, it's better than no shampooer. Um, even using that to try to soak up the extra water that's still stuck in the pad on the rug and everything. Um, the rug's shit anyway. So it's like the rugs like paper thin and old and all kinds of stained and stuff. Um, but uh, even doing that, it still takes like two days for the rug to fully dry, which is rather annoying. Okay, look you. You're supposed to work with me here, not be unraveling. <laughs> I'm trying not to get a flattened chicken rooster. That's the goal, at least. So, I hate cooking. <laughs> Mostly because of the mess, because I'm the one that has to do the dishes 90% of the time. 90 to 95% of the time. Husband's not always able to do them, so, and my mom is not allowed to do them because half the time when she does them I have to end up rewashing them because she can't see that well and we find stuff stuck to the plates and everything and I'm just like just just let me just don't because it's more of a pain in the ass to have to go back and waste the water to rewash something again And it's not like just a plate, it's like half the silverware and stuff. So I'm just like, just, just don't. You know what you could do for me is make less dishes. Like think about what you're doing. Can this fork be used while cooking multiple things? You know, it's like, you don't need a serving spoon if it's just you and my dad eating out of the same bowl use the same spoon to eat with for one of you that you are dishing it out like you don't need to go through five spoons when two will do sort of thing you know because we can't go longer than two days without doing dishes before we have no silverware which is terribly vexing especially on days where Half the time I only cook one meal a day. We don't really have the budget for me to have more than one hot meal a day right now. And then I get the dishes done and then I'm like, I don't want to make more dishes, I just did them. Which was kind of the conundrum I was running into last night when I wanted to make my cookies because I was like, but I just did these dishes. I don't want to make a bigger mess. Um, I feel like that needs to be a little bit 
something bigger. This guy's going to be pretty heavy. We might need to do a, uh, a two hook, um, a two attachment and do like a string between the two sort of thing to balance him. I'm just kind of fluffing out the roving here. Get it to where I want it to be. It's gonna be a lot. All right. Hopefully, this will be. The last bit here that we need. All right, so I am gonna try to stab him. Oh no, our chicken ran away. No, come back. The chicken has left. That's not good. Come back, chicken. All right, let's see about getting. Sorry, I was just kind of trying to hit the rest of this guy in a couple of places. Make sure he's still looking all right. All right, I want to attach get that finger out of there. Oh god, that would be a hell of a thing to have to go to the emergency room for. With everything still attached with this through the styrofoam ball and in my finger and being like, hey, what's up? Can you imagine the eyebrow raises? And then being like, so, what is this? I'm like, yeah, I have a needle that has like barbs or notches cut into it, and um, I was holding this styrofoam ball in my hand, and that finger didn't have a protector on it, and it went through. <laughs> Could you just imagine? Ugh, if I can. That is a scenario that could fully happen in my world. One hundred percent. We're gonna try not to make that happen. We're gonna do our damnedest to keep that from happening. But it is totally something that could happen. to equate this stuff with sort of, I don't know, mentally sort of like sculpting. And I know it's really not. Maybe wood carving. I've never done wood carving though. That sounds like fun and really frustrating at the same time. About a wood carving set of tools once, like a cheap set from like the craft store, and just couldn't figure out how they were supposed to work because whatever I bought to try to use them with it just it wouldn't nothing seemed to happen so either my hand strength was shit which it is it always has been um or those tools were shit. I'm not sure which. So I never really got anywhere with that. Maybe my tools just weren't sharp enough. 
Like, I was one of the kids in school that had to go through special ed classes where they would pull me out of classes I probably shouldn't have been pulled out of because, you know, it was the late 80s, early 90s, and they didn't give a fuck. Um, and, uh, or just thought, you know, had a premonition of the future. This one doesn't really need this class. And, uh, I would have to sit there and, like, play with modeling clay and stuff. Like, not, not, um, not like Play-Doh, like the modeling clay, like the Crayola modeling clay. The stuff that came in the wax paper, um, rectangles. It would be like blue, green, yellow, red, and um, in those uh, rectangles, they kind of look like sticks of butter that were wrapped, and um, there would be like four tubes, like four cylinders of uh, four logs of clay in there, all stuck together to make this this uh, rectangle and the shit wasn't supposed to ever dry out and they're like yeah you need to play with this your hands aren't strong enough and I'm like what what do you mean my hands aren't strong enough they they actually told my mom I have this memory I doubt she remembers it but they told her she had to get me this Crayola clay to use to play with to help strengthen my hands. Which I always thought was very odd. That nobody wanted to look into that further as to why that was. Because I was always coloring and doing the things and stuff and didn't quite understand. So I was like, okay. I mean, I got clay out of it, so I was like, what the fuck ever, but I never knew what the hell to make with that clay, so. Like, I don't mind having the things, but I need, I need the nudge to push me into what to build sometimes or to make sometimes. So it's like yay for unsplash in places like those that have the um, royalty copyright free images that we can use as references and stuff. sure shrunk didn't it I was gonna say the roving man that stuff really shrinks down there I was thinking you know we had enough but maybe we don't Well, let's cover it with black, or start covering it in black, and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Now, I didn't have, it's not that I didn't have time, I didn't think about fluffing more of the black last night. Now that I'm looking at the bag, I was like, oh shit, I was supposed to do that. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Where's my, oh, it's still in there. 
it won't be too much of an issue. All right, so we're gonna start to lay in our black base. over the sky and I'm probably making this way more complicated than it should be but this is where my brain's going so I mean honestly if I could remember where the damn rooster cookie cutters were where they ended up probably just use those, but I honestly don't know where they're at. They could be in my desk drawer for all I know. I really need to go through my desk because my controller is missing. I don't know if it's like hidden behind my monitor in the sea of wires that is back there and dust or if it's like in my desk drawer. That's one of the things on my list is to clean in here and give everything a good a good dusting the amount of dust that just settles in this house overnight is insane take my glasses off put them on my desk when I go to go to bed and wake up in the morning and I'm trying to look through my glasses I'm like what is this weird film all over my glasses why does everything look hazy take them off look through them up in the light it's like dusty film all over them I actually need to work on replacing my glasses I wish I could find a set of frames that have flamingos on them. I haven't been able to. This prescription, I think, is four or five years old now. Maybe four. And uh, the lenses, well, one of the lenses is cracked in two places on near the drill mount because these were frameless. But the frameless ones, I don't like how the lens cracked on these. The frameless ones I had had previously didn't do that. So, um, that gives me concern. Now I have another pair of drill mounts that I would really love to use again because I loved the frame, but I don't think any place is going to let me use them. Like, I don't think anybody's gonna let me reuse that frame. I don't know if that's a thing. Now, I did see a couple on... Oh, where the hell was it from? It was some website. Yeah, with a Z. So a couple potential frames that I'd be willing to do over there that weren't too expensive. But our insurance doesn't have eye coverage. So, I mean, I'm that's nothing new. I'm used to not having eye coverage, but it's the fact that we now have to try to find the money 
I still haven't had my my uh, my mouth surgery, and I'm I really don't want to. Um, I'm afraid to have it. The one dentist scared the shit out of me about it, and I am not a fan of the dentist to begin with. And it's coming up on a year since I had my issue, and uh, I'm really afraid to do it. Because the one dentist was telling me, oh, because of the tooth it is, that we're going to have to extract... You're gonna have to have some kind of bridge put in, and you're gonna have to have a bone graft in your jaw, and regardless of whether you do an implant or, or a bridge, and I'm just like, oh my god, that sounds terrifying. And from what I've heard from other people, it's kind of painful. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, well, how much is this going to be? And it was like $4,000. And that's like with no insurance. And I'm just like, oh, that ain't happening. I'm like, we, we can't just pull it. And he's like, well, we could, but because it's your main chewing tooth, like all of all of your other teeth because it's like in the middle of your teeth on the side it's like one of my molars in the middle he's like well if we pull that tooth out then the two teeth behind it and the teeth in front of it are all gonna like fill the gap and um and if you don't do the bone graft then you know the other teeth will like push in and then that section of your jaw will collapse and I'm like what And I'm like, Russell, didn't you have like the same tooth pulled? You didn't have a bone graft. So I don't know if this dentist was just trying to pull a fast one or what. But I can't fucking afford all that shit. It was hard enough getting me to uh, agree to do the fucking crown to begin with. And that hurt bad enough. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, he seemed nice enough, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know if it's just my nerves or not, but something just kind of felt weird about it. And we went and scheduled the first part. He's like, well, it's going to take quite some time. I think he was trying to like wink and nudge. Like it's going to take quite some time for the, uh, for the bone graft to heal. And you're probably looking at like six months or so before we could even do the next part of it. And we're only going to bill you for the parts that we do as we go. And I'm like, like I was starting to like just completely shut down because of how much it was going to cost and wasn't really listening anymore. Because all I could see was like the $4,000 plus dollars in my brain. And I was like, oh my god. But at the same time, I'm like, can't we just like not do the bone graft? Because I don't know about this. But then we had scheduled it. And suddenly the husband had to have emergency surgery. Like two days before I was supposed to um, get this done. And he's like, well, my mom can take you. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. She upsets me enough on a good day. <laughs> That's okay. So 
Anyways, I'll, we'll figure it out later. Right now, it's just not the priority at the moment. And it's a good thing I didn't do it, because I would have been fucked up for a few days, I'm sure. And he was fucked up enough where, like, he had to have his appendix removed suddenly, and, um, he couldn't do anything when he came home. Like, they, they outpatiented him? Kinda? And, uh, I had to do like everything. I had to like get the trash out, get the recycling out, take care of the dogs, take care of the laundry, um, cook for him for what he was allowed to eat. Because he wasn't allowed to be out of bed for like more than more than the time to go to the bathroom and and all of the things, so I had to deal with all of that. Right, that's not too bad. I think we might need one more. you feel like you're a little off center there my friend we have a little bit of the roving showing through there but it might not matter too much because we're getting another color swath on there oh, hold on has been messaged me. <sighs> He's telling me, the tech at the pharmacy recognizes me by voice. I'm like, oh dear. Oh dear. That's how much my dad needs medication constantly. Alright, so we kind of have our our shape here, kinda. Alright, so I don't think we're quite done with the roving yet, but I think we're done with the black for now. For now. We didn't put the little nubbies on for the feet, but we can probably just wing that with the actual color. Alright, so our head. We have to figure out what color we want the head to be. Um. So let me pull up the photo. You guys see that one in the corner. I'm going to try to bring up a larger version of this. So it's kind of like a tannish brown, right? And we had a couple different possibilities here. So we've got, this one's more of like an orangey brown on the right. This one's kind of like a, uh, maybe like a sienna there in the middle. And then this one's kind of like a pale version of that. Um, and this is kind of like a camel -y color. I'm thinking... <sighs> I'm kind of thinking the middle one. So, well, I mean, they kind of fold that up pretty good. There's, there's a fair amount in there. There's not that much, but... 
not like it's terribly tiny either. Okay, so we're gonna need to um all right, so it's probably better to go more than we need than not enough, you know? I'm gonna have to probably do a couple of passes on this guy. So I'm tucking this into the bottom of our body circle. And I'm going to start um, tacking this in on the head circle. Now see in here it's kind of thin, so like the black is showing through. We'll probably have to um, do a couple of passes on that. But by tucking it into carefully, because we do have that toothpick in there, don't forget that. By tucking that into there, that will help us keep the head in place. Now, doing it this way might deform <laughs> the head a little bit, but you know, we'll get it worked out. We'll get it worked out. did squeeze it a little bit. Not not terribly hard. I mean, we're not making lemonade here. But um, I do have a slight amount of pressure on there. Alright. Just to kind of keep things from twisting and spinning. So our head did get a little flat on the sides. That's fine. That's okay. Don't don't panic unless you wanted the roundness there. Remember be very gentle around this joint here cuz you're probably going to tap the toothpick that's in there. And you don't want to snap your needle. In fact, I'm definitely, definitely hitting that toothpick. I can feel it. Definitely a different texture in there. gonna end up using all of this roving but we might if we do we do hopefully we just have enough to uh, get through this project this is really the most that I can hope for Just 
going to keep layering this guy up till we have our black covered. Now, we didn't have to do the black, but there is a fair bit of black in places on this guy. So I was kind of like, well, what the hell? Sort of situation. Now this roving from the sample set of, I don't really know if it's a sample set, but from the pack of multicolored roving that I had gotten on Amazon. This, this roving's pretty coarse and pretty um, frizzy. So this one's a much different texture than this one. This one's a little, oh, I don't know where you came from. Um, this one's a little silkier and smoother and softer. And this one's a bit coarser, so I guess they were just processed differently. It doesn't really matter, but this one might be a little bit frizzier. Just so you know. One bad thing about black and white fuzz is that it shows every other little piece of fuzz imaginable. Picks up everything, every piece of dog hair, cat hair, random fuzzes from clothing, just bloop, the fuzz from the pad here everything. Alright, so now I'm wrapping the other way. Kind of like in a cross shape. So we went this way and now we're going this way. But you do how you want to do it. Maybe you know better than me. This is just how I'm choosing to do it. Too, two balls to the walls in here because your toothpick. So don't be slamming it home too hard. It's the only way you're going to end up with a very broken needle and multiple broken needles if you keep trying to do that. The second it starts to hit resistance, stop and reverse. Sorry, traffic, people are coming home from work. Traffic seems to start here around 6, 6.30 in the morning. And it seems to start right about the time we start to stream. Lucky us. through, making sure that we're sort of attached here. Looks like a piece of straw or something that was
in the fluff there. says hi everybody what's up littles oh, this chicken doesn't want to stay put hold on what's up littles would you like to say hello yeah. oh critter okay. littles has come to say hello can't really see littles, but hi. What's up? Did you need cuddles? We can't cuddle for too long, though. We can't cuddle for too long. Mom says working. Do you want to go? Oh, you're, hold on, you're stuck it. Hold on. Okay. No. Nope. All right. She's mad. She probably wants me to play with her. Or she needs food. It's always a uh, always an adventure trying to figure out what the heck she wants at night late at night when I'm trying to get some work done can't tell if she wants me to play with her if she wants food if she wants cuddles she's not really a lap cat she won't sit in my lap she'll sit next to me on the bed but only on specific places on the bed Again, weird, but you know. What can you do? Not a whole heck of a lot. Except humor the cat. Or try to. which in and of itself could be a dangerous endeavor. She just makes the most damnedest upset noises and sad little sounds. What the hell is that? That is something that came out of the robing. I will say, or this, um, this stuff, the, the multi-pack stuff. I will say I've had to pull more shit out of that than I ever did um, than I ever needed to with the yarn or even the roving that my f uh, my fellow mod had sent me.
So, I mean, we're starting to build up some, some color here in places. It might take this whole bit of fluff, or almost, to uh, get this filled in to my liking. Just might. Lost where it was. There we are. You're not attached. <laughs> it just kind of laid down on there, and I'm like, wait. Where were we stabbing again? It looks like we were stabbing right in there. I'm hoping this looks something similar to how <laughs> I'm envisioning. It's probably not half the time. What I see in my brain does not translate at all. But we will see how this works out. And if it doesn't work out, we might have time to redo it. We might have to change some of the colors up a little bit if we have to redo it, but... It is Monday. Oh, you know what? I need to check the recycling pickup schedule and see what day our recycling pickup got moved to because we skipped last week, right? And um, I forgot our day's um, Thursday, our pickup day. And they're not going to be picking up on Thanksgiving, so... I need to probably go to the city website, I would imagine. Because we never got an updated paper schedule for this year. We also need to sign up for our bag program. I guess we can do that next month. I suppose. So we have to use city bags that we have to use specific trash bags that have the city name on them or else the city won't pick up the trash. The city trash bags are like $5 a box and there's not that many in them. But they're such shit bags you can't hardly put anything in them. Because when you go to pull them out of the, the trash, the trash can, they like disintegrate and rip and shred. So then we buy regular trash bags, like normal kitchen trash bags. And we have to double bag our trash. And I'm like, how is this saving anything? Because this is ridiculous. You don't make bags that are strong enough to actually let people put their trash in. And... 
then, you know, and your excuse is, well, you have to buy the city bags so that our dump doesn't fill up as fast since we're only picking up through the city for free. Well, not really for free. I mean, you're still paying it in your water bill for sanitation department. Um, you're still paying for the trash pickup one way or another. Uh, it keeps the dump um, from filling up as fast. And I'm like, how? The dump's not private. People are just gonna load up their trucks or their trailers around here and drive their little asses up there and for 10 bucks drop off however much they can drop off within the $10 weight limit and then come back the following week or something like and then we're putting even more stuff on there hold on you guys one second I'll be right back with you Sorry, one second, you guys. Sorry. Let me. I have to uh, type to husband real quick there. Don't you love my flamingo tweezers? They're they're a little beat up. I've had them for a couple of years now. I got those when we were in. Key West um, from the Butterfly Conservatory and Museum. Really fun place. They've got a butterfly garden that you can walk through and um, see all the butterflies flying around you and stuff. It's like a tropical greenhouse they've got set up there. And they actually have um, two flamingos that live in there as well and the museum named them Rhett is it Rhett or is it Brett? I think it's Rhett Rhett and Scarlet like uh, Gone, Gone with the Wind reference I suppose but if you're ever down there totally not sponsored but totally check that out the place is all kinds of fun. You can get some really, really nice pictures. I think they have a thing that you can do on Fridays in the morning. It is an extra charge. I don't know how much it is, but it's like early Friday morning before the place fully opens. Um, they have a thing where you can um, get up close with the flamingos. Or at least they used to. I don't know if they still do it, but they used to. Where um, they would like bring the flamingos like out front and center. I don't think you could touch them, but you might have been able to feed them or something. I want to look into if they still do it the next time we're down there because we haven't done it. And it's like a group thing, so I mean, you're not usually the only ones there I don't think 
I, I don't know the specifics of it, but it is something I want to look into to do at some point, because that is one thing we haven't done. section here is looking pretty well covered so I'm not sure what we're gonna do to fill in the sides we might just um, wrap around now to fill in all of the gappy spots As you can see, as you can sort of see, this isn't really round anymore. It is, um, once you start stabbing the, the styrofoam, the craft foam, it does start to change its shape and take on a life of its own. So it's not that it's not that hard to uh, change the shape of it. Now, it's not like clay where you can put it back. So be sure of how you want to go. I think the only way you'd probably be able to rectify a oopsie would probably be um, would probably be to um, add more uh, fluff in there to fix it, more than likely. So you will get this tapped in here, but we need to stop by the city, city hall tomorrow, because we are out of city trash bags. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass, just a bit. We've got a lot to do. And it never feels like there's enough hours in the day to get all of the things done. To, to take shape here. Which way was I going with this? I think I was going this way. And again, you don't have to use the styrofoam if you don't want to. Craft foam, I keep calling it styrofoam. Yeah. 
in craft store film. try to do layers around here. Don't know if it's gonna work real well, but we're gonna try. I'm doing it this way here just to get our our friend filled in here. Get all of our gaps situated as best as we can. Now, if I could have found my cookie cutters, we could have done a flat one, or started flat, and kind of like how we did the star and the snowman, we could have done those. But we can always see if that idea for another time. way. And we'll see how far we get. Try to go a little bit longer than we did yesterday. Yesterday I just I had a lot going on so we kind of didn't want to get too involved in anything more yesterday. I wanted to go eat, and then I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do. Today I'm not in much, as much of a time crunch. There's still a small time crunch, but... Not as much. as yesterday. Alright. Get this tapped into here. Alright, so I'm not looking too bad. We're getting there. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Do what's not gonna be. Do you need me? Nope. Alright. That's never a good answer. As good as I'm going to be is never a comforting answer. I will say that. Alright. Let's see here. Where's the, where's the butt? There's the butt. We have our bump for our butt now. So we kind of... We know where that's going to be. Alright. So now... see here. My head's kind of changed position, but that's because of the angle that we're on a little bit. A little bit. Alright, so... So, I mean, we're, we're making progress. I know it doesn't look like it, but we are. Like I said, the way I do these things, they seem to take forever. Though, not as long as our 
as our Bob Ross fluff paintings, but... Still pretty, pretty far, or, or pretty time consuming. Although, the husband's present, man. I'm not even sure how many hours I've put in on that sucker already. I, I just don't know. Probably at least 10, if not more. Well, no, because the head took me five alone, roughly. So that one could probably be close to 15 so far. Trying to be careful with the. Um, skeleton in there. And it's probably going to take me at least another 15. I'm hoping to really get some time in on him at some point this week. So I'm not anticipating a stream on Thursday because honestly it's possible that um, since our friend is working on Wednesday it's possible that him and the husband could be doing something Thursday, but he has to go to, friend has to go to somewhere for Thanksgiving dinner. And I don't know what the friend's work schedule is going to be, if they are in fact making him work um, Black Friday or not. That would be more than enough of a reason for me to not want to be at family's house <laughs> for uh, for Thanksgiving and be like, I would rather spend this time with less people around me because next day I don't get a choice in the matter. Like when I worked at the craft store, holy hell. Like. It was probably a little better than like your big box stores like like Walmart and Best Buy and Target, but it was still pretty pretty nuts. Like it was lines from like 7 a.m. almost. Well, no, let's let's say 9 because everybody was at the other places, but Forget it. Forget it. It was crazy. That is one thing I do not miss. Is the absolute pandemonium of working the craft store. on Black Friday weekend because it was non-stop all weekend it wasn't just Friday because we were matching um, our store was matching Michael's coupons and they had all kinds of special coupons for the whole weekend for dollar amounts off your orders and shit but because they were right down the street from us we were trying to compete with them. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. I hated working that weekend. Those were some long ass days, you guys. 
It was like 14 hour days the entire weekend. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 14 hour days, and then like my regular day on Monday. Because my next day off wasn't until um, Tuesday. My ass was toast. I didn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> didn't want to look at anybody. I'm like, leave me the fuck alone. Nobody talked to me. I am invisible. I am a figment of your imagination. Just, just no. You, I'm not really here. Go find someone else to bother, like that sort of thing. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. I mean, those people and their bloody coupons, they're ruthless. Oh my god. Holy shit. It was really bad. Like, we had a team of uh, grandmothers. <laughs> or what we thought were grandmothers, you know. Little old lady gray haired types. And um, our store manager was watching them. And they brought a cart full of yarn. There was like three of them shopping together up to the front and sat it next to one of our display tables up there and they would each grab a thing of yarn and then they would go through the line and then they would pay for it they would go back and and grab another thing of yarn <laughs> I think they went out to their car and put the yarn in the car and then came back in and the managers like okay look <laughs> he's like I've been watching you guys for a while He's like, one per visit, a visit's usually like once a day. <laughs> they got so mad at him, they just walked away and left the cart sitting there. <laughs> like, oh my word. And then in the middle of all of the sale pandemonium, you would have people coming in and doing purchase orders, like businesses or schools or teachers. And it's like, oh my god, really? We're gonna do this now? Okay. Because, you know, there was only, um, only those of us that knew how to run the customer service desk were able to do the purchase orders. So they had to come through specific registers. Sometimes we would make them go to the register all the way at the end. So that it was a little bit quieter so we could think and communicate with them without everybody screaming I need change I need this the phone's ringing off the hook I need so-and-so like crazy crazy pandemonium and we didn't get any extra breaks either Like, we got our normal breaks when there was time for our normal breaks. Like, we had to make sure that the kids were getting their breaks on time. That was a big thing um, for, for child labor laws in the States. And um, especially in New Jersey, because our asses got fined. Um, and it wasn't that the kids weren't getting their breaks. The kids actually got us in trouble. Because... because they felt bad. Th this was the, the terrible thing, right? You know, so like the kids would see us struggling on register and just drowning in in um, lines when they were coming back in the building from their breaks. 
like there was a Burger King in our parking lot or a pizza place so like they would duck out and go grab something to eat and then they would come back and they're like oh my god you guys are so busy so they thought that they were doing a good thing and clocking back in a minute early to get up front mm -hmm. to help us and that got us fucking fined because they weren't taking their full 30 minutes so then we had to extend their breaks to 45 so if they did come back a minute early then we weren't getting in trouble mm -hmm. it was terrible I'm gonna be in the other room for just a little bit my phone's dying Oh, you're going to charge it? Okay. Are you sure you don't need me for anything? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. They're all good. All right. So, I mean, it it was... It wasn't like we weren't giving them their breaks. We were sending them out. They were coming back early of their own, of their own choice, some of them. And, um, like, we didn't tell them to. They were just doing it. And they didn't realize that them coming back a minute early was as big of a problem as it was and we're like no no you can't you have to be out a full 30 minutes and um so then we had to extend their breaks to 45 minutes to ensure you know if they came back early we didn't get in trouble um because i mean we we were doing what we were supposed to be doing it's just they accidentally sabotaged us <laughs> in in their want to help. So, um, yeah, we had to explain to them that you have to be out at least this much time. Because we had the, you know, the way the time clocks worked. People knew how to work the time clock if they punched out on a certain on a certain number or a certain minute they knew they were going to get paid for the next increment but uh I felt so bad because the kids were like I didn't mean to get you in trouble they, they were like oh my god they're like, it's alright it's alright we'll, we'll deal with it but now you know this is why your breaks are being extended so that was, that was a struggle, um, especially on the weekends, especially on Black Friday weekend. Oh my goodness. Man, afternoon lunches, because I'll tell you, two-thirds of the, maybe not even two-thirds, maybe three-quarters of the weekend staff were under 18. There were a few custom framers, but they stayed over in their neck of the woods they they couldn't help us up front they had their own problems back there um there there most yeah the custom framers were 18 and up um there was usually a senior custom framer over there to help them um most most busy weekends not every weekend but some weekends um they had their own register over at their counter for their stuff that they had to do and um let me think so saturdays it was under 18 under 18 under 18 on that side of the store and I think the departments in the middle of the store had one person that wasn't 18 that like like wasn't under 18 excuse me and then it was me and the other front end person because on Saturdays there were two of us um, during the day there were two of us um, because I had to come in at 7 no Yes. No. No. 6.30? 
or was it six? Store opened at nine, seven. So on normal weekends, I was in at seven on Saturday and 7.30 in the morning on Sunday. And then I would stay till my eight hours were up. Black Friday weekend was different though. I would be there, see look how long this is getting. Um, I would be there at like, I might have been there at the same time, but I was still working a 14 hour day. Um, I think the office manager did the things and stuff on the Black Friday weekend because there was it was just so much. But she left as soon as she was done, but she's like, no, I need you up front. I was like, um, okay. Yeah, because the store opened early. So yeah, so she was like in there at like six working on that. But um, it was crazy. So be kind to the retail workers. This uh, this this uh, seasonal kickoff shopping season, please, especially. Um, you're not the only customer they've had to deal with. And trust me, those of us on the other side of the register we know sometimes mistakes are going to happen. Like, butterfingers happen, wrong keys get hit sometimes. Sometimes something in the computer system didn't get tagged for being, for supposed to be ringing up on sale. It happens. A lot of times when you're in a situation where you're in a store that scans their items, when like most of these big chain stores and we weren't that big of a chain store I mean there there was it had expanded to pretty much at least one store in every state down the east coast um, I think they had just put a store in Florida maybe or I don't know if they had quite gotten that far but they were working on it when I was still there I'm not sure how far they ended up getting um, but when you're dealing with with companies that have multiple locations throughout different states. They're going to usually have a home office, all right? And the home office is the one are the ones normally programming the scan system. Okay? So, when you go up there and you scan it, a lot of times that's not done at store level. Sometimes it can be. It depends on the store and it depends on if that store's having a special sale, but 99% of the time, at least for us, it came down from the home office like I remember the office manager having to call or one of our other senior employees that had been there forever that helped um, get the scanning system set up and would deal with the register parts when they went down and stuff she would be on the phone a lot of the times calling the home office and being like hey this thing's not scanning on sale we need to get this fixed so um, I do remember that they were having to do calls to home office to try to get the thing fixed. So just because something rang up wrong, that doesn't mean that that person was at fault. Um, and you know, a lot of times these are kids. They're, they're in high school, you know, they're, they're doing the best they can. And these holiday weekends are brutal, okay? There's people screaming at them. There's kids crying in their line. There, there's, it's just, there is so much going on up in the front end at the registers. Just please pack your patience. It's not necessarily their fault that something rang up incorrectly if, if it was a scanning program issue. So please don't take it out on them. You know, you can, you can politely handle things there's a right way to handle it and a wrong way to handle it, basically. So, I mean, if you think something rang up wrong, don't wait till the transaction finishes. Be like, oh, wait, what price did that come up? And, and investigate it then instead of waiting till you pay and then flipping your shit because you see that something didn't come out. If you think it didn't come out right and you're unsure, don't flip out <laughs> at your poor, overworked cashier calmly take yourself over to customer service 
because they're probably the ones that are going to have to fix it. Because once the transaction's done, most cashiers, their hands are tied. They're, they're going to have to send you over to the customer service desk to either investigate it or readjust it anyway. So either question it right then if, if it looks like it was regular price and it should not have been and get it sorted then or pack your patients well pack your patients anyway but you know if you notice it after the fact calmly go over to customer service be like hey um there was a sign back there that said these were supposed to be on sale but it looks like this one rang up regular price or a couple of mine might have rung up regular price and I didn't notice till now is there any way that you know can you help me? Were these actually supposed to be part of the sale? Like, like there's a way to go about things politely and especially, especially this time of year in the pandemonium that is happening, you know, a little bit of kindness is going to go a huge way. All right. Just please. I'm begging you for retail workers everywhere. We understand everybody is having a tough day. They're having a tough day too. Let's just try to be mindful in the chaos. You don't have to be nasty. And in fact, it's, it's scary how how refreshing it is when you have a customer that's not having a meltdown because something didn't ring up right. Like, the fact that this happens more often than you would realize when you don't work retail, it's just like, just please, we're trying. They're trying. It's a tough weekend. All right, which way were we going here? Wow, see, this was a circle. It's now not. Um, but you know what? It's okay. It's actually working to our advantage, to believe it or not. So it looks really creepy right now, but, you know, we're getting there. So I was saying I wanted to get this started because it was going to take us a little bit. This was a circle when we started, I promise. I, I didn't really plan on it taking this shape. Um, this just kind of happened. But it'll, it'll help us in the long run, actually, get all of our feather layers in here, believe it or not. Sorry, I got little bits of craft foam fuzz in there. All right. So yeah, we might actually use all of this. Well, maybe not all of it, but close to definitely close to. Alright. So don't forget you still have that toothpick in there. If you went with the toothpick. You're still able to hit that sucker, so just be careful.
I can I can feel it's it's right here. It's shifted its position. Like it's right there. It's probably going to be like the derpiest rooster ever, but you know, we're trying. <laughs> okay. Yep, there's that. I'm not going in that far because I can feel our toothpick friend right there. It's crazy to me how much you can smush these um, craft foam things because they feel so hard on the outside, right? When when they're packaging, it's hard to believe that these are both the same the same thing, same shape, same starter shape. Alright, now we still have a couple of little gappy guys in there. Don't worry about that yet. We'll, uh, we'll take care of that. We'll take care of it when we get there. Alright. We'll get this worked in here. Just kind of trying to overlap a little teeny bit from the previous pass, just so it doesn't start to look like rings going around it. Kind of thing, that's what that's all about. little tails are attached. I mean, it's starting to firm back up a little bit, but it still has a little bit of squish to it. Not a tremendous amount, but it's it's there to a degree. And because this stuff's a little extra frizzy or fuzzy, however you want to classify that. I'm just trying to make sure that we are well attached. And we still have to make our little our little wings and stuff, so we'll probably attach uh, make the wings out of the roving. Probably should have did that first, but and that's okay. We'll get there. Oh, 
Oh, his poor head. He looks like a little hammer at this point. Gonna be one derpy chicken. That's okay. We'll see if we can... We'll see if we can get him out of the ugly stage. We might. We'll see what happens. We still have a long ways to go on this guy. That's for certain. Most definitely. bit of an angle, so his head's gonna be much bigger than his body, but you know, that might elongate out a little bit as well once we start smushing him, so. You know, it could still change. It could still very much change. a straw or something that got stuck in the roving. At least it's not a black blob anymore entirely. So you guys can kind of see what we're doing now. I'll tell you, that black is just, just looked like a shadow to me. I don't know if it looked any better to you guys, but on my screens, it just looked like I was stabbing into this void. It didn't look like there was anything there. So the head's still not attached well, which is why that toothpick is still in there. I was going to glue the toothpick in, but then I wasn't sure if the toothpick was going to stay. Because, you know, reasons. At one point, he was poking out the top, and I was like, okay, well, maybe once we get the head sort of anchored, we'll just pull him out, because then we won't need him anymore. But, um, he's not poking through any longer, so, um, pulling him out's not really much of an option any longer. So... That's a thing. It would seem. Alright, that's probably going to need another pass right in around in here. Because then you are a little bit thin. And we have some gaps poking through. 
next year we can try to do like a little turkey guy or something. So we'll probably have more time to do those things. But our gingerbread house actually ate up more time than I was expecting it to. I was actually hoping to be done that like a week or two ago, which, you know, didn't happen, but from my slow poke self, I should have expected that. So we get talking and life starts happening around me and Sometimes we have to deal with the life that's happening around me. Right, what are you? You are just like over here having a grand time. There's like a stray. I don't know if it's a stray, but it's definitely a loose strand that's separated from the group here. you're doing. Alright. Yeah, you're just, you're just over here doing your own thing. But you're annoying me because you're just being all willy-nilly. Alright. So this is kind of loose on up into here. Alright, so I'm looking at our image. And so the yellow is going to kind of come down into here. And I realized now that I'm looking at this, I should have been working on this backwards. Damn it. Because the fluff needs to like lay on top of itself. Sorry, I'm hearing a banging and I'm trying to place it. I don't know what the banging is. What the hell is the bang? Hang on. if he actually gets that message. I don't know if he's going to. Sometimes the husband's phone notifies him on Discord and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes he doesn't see it. For like an hour. I have no idea what I'm hearing. But it kind of sounds like hammering. And I don't know if it's coming from in the house or outside the house. What the hell is that? Is that coming through the microphone? If it is, please tell me, because then I'm going to have to go and investigate real quick. Because this is getting a little irritating.
and now it stopped. No idea what the hell that was. I don't think it was coming from outside. Like, I could feel it and hear it, so it was especially irritating. I moved the camera to the side a bit so that we could get the image in there without me worrying about the image covering what we were doing. Well, he didn't answer me, so maybe he was the one doing it. But I thought he was still in the other room, so I'm not certain. <laughs> Sorry, noises like that for me become extremely distracting, especially when they're out of place. So there are, hold on a second, you guys, I'm sorry. Let me, I'll be right back. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so it wasn't the husband making that noise. Because that was my mom looking for him. Alright. So, I don't know if we're gonna need quite this big guy. We'll see. As we finish up doing this coat on the face. Sorry, my glasses are, f I can't see very far away. And it got to the point where I was like, I am not taking these on and off because I could still see close up with them on. But now, close up with them on feels too close. So, I don't know what the hell changed recently, but I'm trying to find a way I can see through the bottoms of them. I think my stigmatism's going crazy. That's fun. My one eye astigmatism is worse than the other. And I could tell something was a little weird before they told me that. Because when I have my one eye closed, stuff is just fuzzy. And when the other eye is closed, um, it's slightly clearer, but a little blurry. Like, I can kind of maybe guess the, the other eye is just like, nope. I don't know. It, it's this color, maybe, but your guess is as good as mine is what the fuck it says. So that's a little bit annoying. It makes seeing at night a fucking trial and kind of scary. Because, like, every light 
at night outside is just like starbursty and there's like these weird light halos around them and it almost looks like sun sunbursts on like film lenses or or like photographs and stuff like every single light every headlight every street light where, where did this little fly come from like what the hell Shoe fly, you bothering me. Maybe it came from the crab tank. We might need to swap the food out in there. Although we did have two crabs come up, so um, one was, had definitely survived molting. It was a long molt, though. But he had all the little fuzzy sparkly hairs from having just finished his molt. That oh, husband has uh, hermit crabs. We'll see if I'm going to have time to work on part two of his gift. I don't know if I'm gonna. I would like to. But we will see. What happens with that? So I'm probably gonna have to do like the base coat of this shade, right? And then actually do the feathers that layer on top of the next one after we get the other shade on here, because that's why I was like, fuck, I forgot I should be doing this backwards. This isn't quite like paint. But we'll figure it out. So he might take a little extra time to come out. of his uh, ugly stage. Hopefully he does emerge from his ugly stage. Alright, I'm gonna snip this. I wonder if we'll ever get these bits of craft foam off of this pad. I mean, we've got wax embedded in part of it, so... Actually, where is the wax? Over here. Although it didn't damage it as much as I thought it would. I mean, the needle can still go through there, but it's definitely a texture change. And the fact that this needle is bent is not hand handling it that well, but... At least it's only in that tiny little spot. Okay, so... Let me see if we can... I'm coming in at a slight angle there just to try to... My head's kind of a little lopsided there, but that's all right. Okay, so we're not quite done with this color yet, but for right now, I'm going to wrap him up. Oh, that's a big piece of, what is that? Straw or something? Some kind of plant fiber. Alright, we'll put that into its little holdy bag for now. My hair is getting just long enough to be annoying, but not quite long enough to cut yet. Alright, now. Let's see. So we need a little bit of, um, we need a beak 
and we need to do the mask. And I think I want to do the beak first. Um, what color do we want the beak? I think this is going to be our beak color. Oh, see, this one's a little bit more... Well, it's not as long, so... But it might just be the way it's folded up. So it's always a mystery what you're going to get out of these pouches, it seems. Okay, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off. I am going to try to start to stab this guy a little bit. on the pad. So this is going to be a little bit delicate. What's on this plant fiber? I'm not thrilled with this. This pack of roving. I'm gonna use it because we've got it. And I guess, you know, I can't complain that much because we did get a good number of uh, colors. But. I don't know where it is off the roving like that. This just seems a little extra coarse. Okay. I just went through the seam on that. Be very careful. Your finger protectors will only do so much for you. Okay. It is possible. To go through the seams on them and still stab yourself. Be careful. I'm just trying to somehow, some way. Trying to come up with something beak like. Don't know <laughs> if that's going to happen. But we're definitely trying. I'm just trying to split that out a little bit. Alright, I just kind of dampened my fingers there just a touch. So. But we can... Where should our beak live? Probably... Probably about there. have to attempt to add on to this guy. I'm 
we will see. this side a little bit more and there is a I don't know if that's just a coarse piece of fluff that didn't quite get the memo not real certain we can get him to look somewhat beak-like. Somewhat. Alright, I'm just gonna kinda try. See if we can reshape our beak here. We might be able to. Maybe. Maybe kind of sort of, so I kind of have the head turned a little bit. So you're going to have to kind of play back and forth because it's a thin beak. Right? So whatever you're doing on one side is going to stab through the other. It's going to kind of look like your Yori nose strips anybody knows what I'm talking about with those or like some some stalactites or whatever right, that feels pretty good well, he feels pretty solid Got a little bit of stray fuzzies. Just gonna give him a little bit of a haircut. I don't want to get too carried away, but all right, so we have a we have a beak. We have a beak. Alright. We've been beaked. Beak beak beak. Alright. See if we can shove this back into the bag. Alright. I'm gonna close this bag because I don't know how much. Well. I mean. We could probably use that again later, so we're not gonna fully get rid of that. So we've got some red here. Not sure what shade of red, it's just red. Alright, so we're gonna pull just a little bit. Now we need to make his little facey mask thingy. So this is gonna be a little bit of a challengey do. Challengey do. Challengey do. Alright, so. We're gonna have to be very careful because this is gonna go around the nose. So 
sometimes if it's being a little unruly, if you dampen your finger just a tiny bit, I'm not talking sopping wet, just a little bit. You can kind of get the roving to sort of cooperate. Doesn't really work that well with the yarn if you're going straight yarn, but all right. So, yeah, I lost my picture. Okay, so I'm gonna be about halfway. Down the side of the beak, but on the face, right? So, it's going to look a little turkey like. I think until we get him all settled in. So I'm going to bring this over to where I want the eye to be because the eye sits surrounded by our red color here. So where do we want the eye to be? Maybe spot. Now the trick is finding that same spot on the other side. That's the real trick, for me at least. Alright, so... Work on getting this all tucked in. Just want a a cutoff point so I don't get too carried away here. Sometimes you need that guideline. Get off of there. Picked up some yellow fuzz. Now granted we're gonna have to come back in and fill this guy in with the red, but that's okay. I'd rather start out small like with small strips. And then work my way in and fill it in. This guy. Hey, Taco. Happy Monday. How's Taco doing? 
Don't forget to send in your predictions for how you think the challenges are going to go for Dragonflight. I'm going to be putting a poll up later on the YouTube channel. I don't know if I can run one on Twitter. I don't even know who's still on Twitter at this point. I know a lot of people bailed out. But yeah, like, what challenge do you think is going to be the first to have a max level? What challenge do you think is going to have the most, um, the most max level challengers? You know, anything like that. Do you think there's going to be more max level challengers in Dragonflight than there was in Shadowlands? You know, that kind of stuff. And you can email the podcast, podcast at wowchallenges.com. You can Discord it to Lita, to me, to any of the mods, whatever you want. Just don't DM it to Twitter right now. Because if Twitter goes down, I'm going to lose access to the DMs. So that's the only reason I don't want somebody to DM something in and me not see it in time. Okay, that's a little... That's a little off. Well, I guess nothing is really 100% symmetric. Twitter's still kicking. I don't know for how long. And we'll be there till the bitter end. But it's still kicking. But I am starting to try to utilize the group chat. Um, the cross server group chat in WoW a bit more for WoW challenges. I gotta look up how you join it though, because I don't remember. I really don't. But we're putting contingencies. I'm working on contingencies. I mean, we still have the Facebook. I mean, that's something, I guess. And the Discord and the forums and all that. I had asked if somebody would put a forum post up um, looking for Dragonflight predictions. I don't know if anybody did. Because I don't... I don't go to the forums. The others take care of the forums. I have enough shit to do. The forums are not some place that I hang out. And I'm talking about the Wild Challenges website forums. Um, we have our own forums over there for people to converse on or ask opinions or questions or what have you. It's starting to look like a bird of some description now. I will say that. So how was your weekend, Taco? I hope it was weekend-rific. Or something along those lines. I'm trying to be careful with how I'm holding the head because the head's not um, anchored that securely like yet. It will be. It's not quite there yet. And we're definitely going to need to do another pass on this guy. Not sure how I feel about this shade of red though. I mean we're gonna use it but I think my yarn red is a brighter shade of red. So 
one kind of feels I don't know like a pinky red that doesn't really make sense but I feel like this could be a deeper solider shade of red is good not having anything planned is nice it is nice isn't it especially when you always have stuff going on I did remember to get the turkey out of the freezer. We have an alarm set to remember to get the coolers out of the freezer. At least we should. When we get done here tonight, I have to go to our city hall website and remember to look up the holiday schedule. Because I'm not sure what day are recyclings being picked up now? And we can't really miss another week because it's gonna be an overflow nightmare if we do. Alright, so this is just like the little red mask that goes around our eyes here. But we're working on getting in here. Again, don't forget, we still have that toothpick in there, so tread carefully. You don't want to slam the needle home a little too hard and smash it on the toothpick. take another layer of fluff still get that one sorted and I think I need to do another bit of red around Um, beak there because we're gonna also have um, so if our eyes are gonna go like here right or I guess this side would be a better example because it's a little bit this is our our butt feathers down here um, so if the eyes gonna go about here we have to bring a little bit of the red thingy to hang down under the chin still we have a little bit of white that I need to put on the edge here and then we have to do our little our little doodle on the top of the head my nose is crooked actually my tailpiece is a little crooked too everything's a little crooked everything I do is always a little crooked oh well Can't win them all, I suppose. What's going on? Evo was digging around in your garbage thing for some reason. Why? Couldn't tell you. The spray bottle's on the edge of the table. Yeah, I don't. Alright. I'll tell you, the cats are as bad as little kids sometimes. Like, we already had to have one cuddle break for Littles. Okay. 
but it sounds like the dogs are reaching their limit of me streaming. Oh no, I'm just getting happy wiggles from one of them. Alright. So yeah, we definitely need to do another layer on this guy. What time is it? 6.30. Alright, I'm starting to get hungry. So... Here's what I'm thinking we're gonna do. All right, for the, for this week's schedule, because you know holiday weeks are always a little funky. Um. Oh, good boy, Momo. Good boy, Momo on the bed. Good boy. He doesn't get up there very often ever since he fell off, so it's always an exciting time when he does that. So here's what I'm thinking the schedule for this week's gonna be. Um. So we're going to stream on Wednesday. We're going to do Coral Island Wednesday, right? Because um, Thursday is Thanksgiving and I have to cook. And I don't know how tired or how much in a mood I'm going to be to stream Thursday. If I do feel like streaming Thursday, it'll be late. Like maybe 7 or 8. Um, and that's if our friend isn't doing anything with Russell. I don't know. Uh, I guess it would depend on what time he gets home and what time he has to be to work on Friday if he is working Friday. Um, you, you can safely assume every day but Tuesday is available. Well, I didn't know if he had Black Friday off. He has Black Friday off, but I don't know what he's going to be up to. Okay. Because I didn't want to infringe on your time because you guys haven't I, had I much can try time. To ask. Yeah, if you can find out. Um, if nothing's going on Thursday night, like around seven or eight, if I'm up to it, we'll we'll do a, a bonus art stream where we're working back on this guy since we're gonna do Coral Island on Wednesday. Um, Friday, I'm planning to do um, Planet Zoo like normal. Saturday, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on the the Wild Challenges podcast with Lita. Um, we're doing our Dragon Flight prediction show. So send in those predictions, you guys. Let us know. And um, Saturday and Sunday will be um, arty things like normal. And we'll hopefully get this guy closer to being wrapped up this weekend. I don't know. I would like to. We will see what happens. We still have a little bit of a ways to go. Because uh, we still have to make our wings and uh, figure out our little feet situation. But... He's at least kind of bird-like. I still can't believe that this morphed into this shape when it was the same shape as this. So those 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 were two inch and a half round styro, uh, craft foam balls. So um, for those that didn't see the husband's um, present, I have started to put the color on there. The tail needs, this tail section needs at least another layer of that color if not two, because the roving is breaking through in some thin spots. But, um, this guy's about, I know it's hard to see because I'm zoomed in, this guy is about ten and a half inches long, eleven inches long. So he's a big boy. He does stand up on his own now, though, sort of. So, I've also got that going on. So that's what the schedule is going to look like this week. I'm going to go and check in with the husband because I haven't really talked to him yet today and see how badly my dad misbehaved while they were out earlier. And, um, and uh, I will catch you guys uh, definitely Wednesday, migraine permitting, as always. So have a good week. Be safe. Uh, remember to pack your patience if you're going out Black Friday weekend shopping. We had that conversation earlier. And I will see you guys on Wednesday this week. Take care. Thanks for hanging out and have a good one.